13-week theater is supported by Patreon. Subscribe now and get exclusive early access. In 1973, Screen Gems Television decided to adapt the hit wife-swapping movie Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice for television. To pull off this feat, they tapped producer Larry Rosen, who was working as a producer on The Partridge Family. The resulting sitcom, sanitized for television, only lasted seven episodes. But in the process, Rosen formed a long-lasting friendship with the film's co-writer Larry Tucker. Seven years later, when Tucker had the idea for a new sitcom, he knew exactly who to call. Inspired by the stories of the Knights of the Round Table, especially those about the wizard Merlin, Tucker envisioned a show about Merlin hiding out in the modern day. As Max Merlin, wizard and part-time mechanic, the Lowry's cast Tony Award-winning actor Barnard Hughes. And as Merlin's apprentice Zack, they hired occasional teen heartthrob Clark Brandon. Rounding out the cast were Jonathan Prince as Zack's best friend, who has no idea that Zack is a wizard in training, and comedian and match game regular Elaine Joyce as Alexandria, Merlin's liaison with the Wizards Council, who are forcing Merlin to take on a new apprentice. Did you find someone? No one. Merlin, you're a sorcerer, a magician of the highest order. Don't tell me you can't find an apprentice. 1,600 years I never needed an apprentice. Why now? You're overworked and you're falling behind. And what if I said no? You accept mortality and lose all your powers. A lousy retirement plan. Find somebody. You're getting old. You're losing it. I got us to Yokohama. A party trick. Ah, that was a romantic time. We dressed nice. Man could prove he was special by drawing a sword out of a stone. There was music in that. Now what do they give me? A crummy overall, a greasy garage, and what's my sword and a stone? A crowbar in concrete. Stop whining and find a kid. Alex, there's something about kids I never told you. What? I hate them. Hi, Simone. Hi, Zach. Job still open? Oh, jeez. When accident-prone Zack manages to pull Merlin's crowbar out of a block of concrete, he proves himself worthy of the job, and Merlin is forced to undertake his training. What I break now? My heart. <laughs> The Larry sold the show to Columbia Pictures Television, who produced a pilot directed by TV legend John Aston. CBS loved the pilot and bought the show for their fall 1981 season. Mr. Merlin debuted on Wednesday, October 7th, 1981, to positive reviews and solid ratings. Reach for CBS and reach for the stars. This San Francisco garage owner is actually Merlin the Magician from King Arthur's Court. You have to be over 1,600 years old. Oh, I do 30 push-ups a day and I don't eat fried food. Zach's his new apprentice, discovering Merlin's world of wizardry and bubbling over with tricks of his own. Did you part the Red Sea? No, oh, I'm good, but I'm, I'm not that good. It's Madcap Magic when Mr. Merlin premieres this fall. This is CBS. Working in a garage is not exactly Camelot, but it's where I met Zack. I'm a wizard who works alone. Not anymore. Now they tell me I need an apprentice. And he's it. The Merlin? You have to be over 1,600 years old. Well, I do 30 push-ups a day and I don't eat fried food. Did you part the Red Sea? Oh, I'm good, but I'm, I'm not that good. As time went on,
went on, however. The show's ratings started to slip against its competition, ABC's Greatest American Hero and NBC's Real People. In December, CBS shuffled its schedule, moving Mr. Merlin to Monday nights at 8, hoping it would fare better. The fireworks Monday when Mr. Merlin's magic puzzle spells big bucks for Zack. He stole my puzzle. Will it be big business or big trouble? Write to me from prison. Then will Private Benjamin <laughs> spill all of Captain Moses' top secrets? Are you upset with me about something? Mr. Merlin and Private Benjamin, Monday. It didn't, because this time, it found itself up against ABC's That's Incredible and NBC's Little House on the Prairie. The show struggled along for the rest of the season. CBS honored the series' 22-episode order, running the show through March 22, 1982, at which point they finally canceled it. After Mr. Merlin, Barnard Hughes went back to Broadway and the occasional film and TV role, before his death in 2006. Clark Brandon's acting career sputtered along for the rest of the decade before he finally turned his attention to directing in the 1990s. And the Larrys? They were prepared to move on. They were already laying the groundwork for another supernatural sitcom. Hello. But that's another story. 